Hello crafty friends, welcome to the fourth in our white paper scraps series. Today I'm working with, I guess, medium sized scraps and again, I'm going to tape them down on the back side just to make them easier to work with. Right, I've got some broken china distress oxide here and I'm going to Push that down onto my mat, turn it into a paint with water and use my smusher to pick it up and smush it on. I think I need a little bit more. If you want to know how to make and use a smusher, there is a video in which I give the instructions and a playlist and they're linked in the video description. Just give that a blast with my hairdryer and then we'll smush on another colour. Next I'm going to smush on some kitsch flamingo I think. I did wipe my smusher between colours. Okay, that's done. I'll dry that again. So that's all dry. I'm going to take the washi tape off the back because the next thing I want to do is heat embossing and that'll just be easier to do with smaller individual pieces. I will give these another dry and then I will treat them with my anti-static powder tool just to make sure everything's good and dry and not sticky. So I'm going to use this rubber stamps one of my favorites it's a really delicate scribbly line not sure where it's from well i got it from a charity shop but i don't know the manufacturer might be stamping up but all i'm going to do is stamp on each piece like this doesn't matter if they overlap just want to have a good distribution and i'm using super fine silver embossing powder which i think will look nice with the blue and the pink and it's super fine so it picks up the detail really well in that stamp so i will do this to all the pieces then heat them together right there we have six really pretty pink and blue and silver pieces that we can cut from to make some cards. So as I've done in previous videos in this series, I'm going to make one card for you on camera and then a bunch of other cards using the same backgrounds off camera and then come back towards the end of the video and show you everything I've made. So I think this would really lend itself to going behind an aperture in a card panel. So that's what I'm going to do with these pieces. So I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock about four by six inches, which is the full size of the card that I'm going to do. I've put it in my scoreboard right in the corner and I'm putting my corner positioner in there. And that way I can tuck my die right in and know that it's nice and square on my panel. I'll hold it in place with a sticky note and then run that through my die cutting machine right so there is the aperture this particular die is an old die from the works i don't think it's available anymore but i'm sure you'll be able to find something similar if you like the look and what i'm going to do is put this bit behind the aperture often when i do something like this i will separate the two layers with foam tape because I think it adds a nice little bit of dimension, but I want to keep these as flat as possible for posting. So I think we'll have it there, and I'm going to cut off the bit I don't want or need, and then I can use that in a minute. And now I can add glue to the back of my panel. And because my card panel is going directly, on my background i'm going to add glue to the net portion and i'm using my dedicated glue sponge dauber just to sponge it on 
and if I'm careful as I pick it up I can avoid smudging glue all over the front of my card panel and press it down with a bit of non-stick deli paper and that should be nice and firmly held now I want to fill up this space on the back though so that when it's stuck to the front of my card it will be level and not undulating so this is something you can do with scraps any scraps don't have to be white scraps because they're going to be hidden behind the front panel of the card So that's ready for a focal point now, which I'm going to create using the bit that I cut off. And I'm going to die cut, hopefully I've got enough, yep just about, I'm going to die cut a butterfly from this bit. So there's my butterfly, what I want to do next is back it with some silver, because I've got silver in here and I thought it would be nice to have silver in my butterfly as well. So I shall get my glue dauber and daub on the wings and the body of the butterfly but not on the antenna because I don't want to have to cut around those that would be really fiddly and I can stick that on there press it down and cut around it with my detail scissors so there we go a pretty little a silvery butterfly I've also cut a tag out of vellum and a doily out of white cardstock and I'm going to use them as layering pieces behind my butterfly. So I'll pop some glue on the back of the butterfly and centre it on the doily. So you can see the doily peeking out all the way around. And I think I want my butterfly and tag around about there. So I'm going to use this Crafter's Companion tape runner which I find really good for vellum it doesn't show through particularly and add that there and then add some to the back of my doily some of this glue and stick it about there too so now we've got that assembled before I stick this to the front of my card I'm going to add the sentiment because it'll be easier to do it at this stage and I've got this little sentiment that's quite delicate. It says, hope all your birthday wishes come true. And I think it will snuggle really nicely there. So I've popped this in my stamp positioner just in case I need to stamp the sentiment more than once. This is a silicone stamp and I do want to use a distress oxide on it. And the two don't always work well together, so it probably need a second stamp. I'm using Broken China to coordinate with the background. And I'm gonna press it gently, because I really don't wanna mess this up at this stage. That's pretty good, but I think that hope all your birthday bit needs a bit extra. Yep, happy with that. And now this can go on the front of my card blank. I'll add some glue to the card blank, doesn't matter which one you add the glue to, and knock them together, and they should be more or less the same size if they're not I can always get my guillotine out and trim things down and I'm going to press that down as a finishing touch I think I want to add a few silver circles and I've got this bit of silver card left and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine and now I've got a nice big pile of silver dots and I'm going to dot them about just as finishing touches. I might put some crystal glaze on top as well, just to give them a bit of dimension. Now for some crystal glaze, I'm just going to put some on and then use the nozzle like a paintbrush to coax it to the edge so I don't flood the whole thing. This should dry clear it looks a bit yellow now but it will dry clear you can use glossy accents for that as well right i'm happy with that i think it looks very ethereal and delicate and i know exactly who i'm going to give that to as their birthday card this year 
Right, I'm going to bobble off now and make some more cards and then come back to you in just a second with the results. And here we are, I have made six cards in total, the one I made on camera plus five more. So this is the one you saw come together and I've pretty much stuck with the same design principles and the same kinds of tools and supplies for my other cards. So this is the first of the other cards and I did the same thing. I took an aperture die and I put it in the top left corner, added a vellum tag and a white doily and a butterfly cut from the remnants, silver dots, and I used the same sentiment stamp set and the broken china ink. And this one says, have a great birthday. It's come out a little bit grungy, but I think it's okay. If I feel like I can't live with it, I will just stamp it again on a bit of paper, cut it out with a, a nice die and stick it over the top. For my next card, different aperture die and I put it in the top right corner. I used the vellum tag, the doily, different butterfly die though, and a sending my love on your special day with the dots. And with this one, I put the aperture in the bottom right hand corner, different butterfly die, different aperture die, different sentiment, but everything else is the same. This one says, hope your birthday is just as amazing as you are. And for this card, I put the aperture, a different aperture die in the bottom left hand corner. I have to do that because I can't remember my left from my right. But if I do that, I know what I'm talking about. So that one's in the bottom left corner. Tag, doily, butterfly, dots and enjoy your special day. And then just for a change, I did a landscape one. Put it in the, essentially it's in the bottom left corner. There's a little bit of a bigger gap here and use a different aperture die and a different butterfly and this one says sending love from all of us. So I'm really enjoying the way that these have turned out. I love the colour, the silver with the colour. I love all these aperture dies. It's a real joy to play with those and I always love a butterfly. So there you go. That is this video done and dusted. I hope it's given you some more ideas of things you can do with your white paper scraps. If it has, do let me know in the comments and please do share any ideas for white paper scraps that you have. And please come back tomorrow for day five of our white paper scraps video series. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.